tie a fly I guess I'm gonna call a northern magic light it's based on northern magic which is kind of one of my original patterns but this one has incorporated a couple of newer tying techniques or different tying techniques um, the Bob Popovic style of hollow tie is gonna I'm gonna do that this way and anyway, this is a rattle. I showed you guys how to do this in my other video. So we're just gonna add that right in there like so. Just tie that in. That's all gonna get covered up later so it doesn't have to be perfect. But just tie it in fairly snug. Don't, there we go. See, we don't want it to be able to move too much. All right, and then we're gonna take some red fish hair. And I got a chunk right here. And it's about 12 inches long. We're going to tie it in about the halfway point. About three wraps or so. Check and see how we're looking for length there. That's not too bad. And we'll double that over and tie that in. That just kind of keeps that tail from, from being able to go anywhere. All right. Then we're going to take some black bucktail. And not a lot, but just a, a nice little clump about maybe a little bit thicker than a matchstick or right in that range. And we're still running the same principles where you don't do anything with the hair. You just have to turn it around so that it goes the other way. It's the hollow tie principle and involves tying the material in backwards and then folding it and, and building up a dam of thread in front of it so you can control the shape of it. So there it's all tied in nice. And now you just want to start kind of folding that back. And this is actually why I'm using this particular vise, is because there's a lot more room around the hook with this vise. It makes it easier for me to do the, the hollow tie. And then once I get that under control, I'm just gonna build a, a little wedge, kind of a tapered dam here. And I wanna make this fairly, fairly tight. So eh, it's not too bad. We could probably go back even just one more there like so all right the next step is a little bit of this black flashaboo now this stuff is really cool uh, it has a really super nice action in the water it just kind of hangs there and flutters and goes all over the place but it doesn't have too much flash and sparkle because there are lots of times when when fish are just not aggressive enough that i want to throw a lot of brightly colored flash at them so this kind of solves that is the best of both worlds for me. It gives me the action of flashaboo without all that flash. So we'll wind that in and just kind of double it over and put it on top of the shank of the hook. So we got that there all nice and tied in. And I'm just going to add just a little bit of flex cement to kind of keep that all in place. That thread is kind of up on a tapered wedge there and if it gets wet or loose at all it would be pretty easy for it to start sliding and come loose so that the glue is going to help that out quite a bit. I'm going to take another little chunk of bucktail about the same size. We don't want too much material in here because it kind of defeats the whole purpose of the hollow tie. The, uh, the whole idea is to get bulk without a whole bunch of material. So it doesn't take a lot of material to provide the illusion of bulk. There we go three times around. Spread that around the shank of the hook just like we did before. And that's kind of slid forward a little bit. We'll be all right. All right, so we're gonna taper that back just like we did last time. All right, and bring the thread up there. Kind of wrapping that in, this one got away on me. Okay. So there we go. Good looking. Thing going on there. We're going to take another little bit of this flash. A little bit less than last time because we're actually going to double it over. So we take about six strands or so and double it. We'll end up with 10 or 12, which is lots. So double it over, cut it. And just kind of keep tabs on it because if you let it get away, it's all staticky and it's just going to go all over the place. Wrap it, double it up around the thread, put it up on top, start wrapping over top of it. 
Spread it around so it's on the top half of the shank of the hook, just like last time. A couple wraps of thread there. A little bit of flex cement again, just to kind of keep everything in place. There we go. And now one last little bit of bucktail to kind of hold everything in place. You'll notice that as I go towards the front of the hook, I tend to use shorter and shorter materials. And that's another one of the things that, that Bob Popovic talked about when he was designing flies. And it allows the materials to kind of control themselves. The shorter materials become relatively stiffer just by virtue of being the same thickness and a lot less length. And so they, they are less likely to tangle and twist and get all messed up. So this actually allows everything to kind of stay put. So there we go. Just gonna kind of take this nice shorter bucktail and I get the shorter stuff by going to the middle of the bucktail where it was brown and using that hair instead of the longer hair that used to be the white hair. This way I can kind of pick and choose the bucktail that I want and we're looking for something about like that. There we go. Maybe just a bit more on the bottom. And you can kind of control where you adjust your taper by how you wrap the thread. If I wrap it more on the bottom, it allows me to taper that back a little bit at the bottom without bringing the top in. And that way I can control the shape of the fly. So there we go. 21st century version of the Northern Magic. We call it Northern Light. Northern Magic Light. Ah, doesn't matter what we call it. It works. It's a fish catching machine. There you go. Turn that tail up just a little bit. Good to go.